Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with a nerf proof minor poison deck that is awesome to upgrade in Clash Royale. Throughout every meta, this deck has stayed at the top of the game and pro players love playing it. A lot of times when you upgrade a new deck, it gets nerfed immediately and then you're like, well, what am I supposed to do now? But Miner's a perfectly balanced win condition that they're not going to be changing anytime soon. And a lot of the other cards in the deck are completely replaceable. If you don't have Giant Skeleton leveled up, you can always run Valkyrie. Or Goblins or Skeletons instead of Guards, Ice Spirit instead of Bats, and Musketeer instead of Archer Queen. There are so many versions of this deck played at top ladder, but I think I think this is the best one. Using Mortar, Miner, and Archer Queen to constantly be attacking the opponent from all sides keeps them stressed and not playing their best. With their elixir and attention divided, it's way easier to find damage. And if you're lucky enough to get a giant skeleton or archer queen on top of their tower, you'll be playing Jenga and their towers will topple. Since the start of Clash Royale, Minor Poison has always been one of my favorite decks. And this is the best Minor Poison deck to upgrade now because the deck will always stay strong. Let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's supporting the channel with creator code SIRTAG. All right, so jump into this one against someone from the Lake Country. So hopefully you just go and give us a sea of value with positive elixir trades everywhere and we we're kind of waiting and seeing if he was going to cycle something because i didn't have guards in my starting hand so i wanted to drop my giant skeleton in the lane that he was going to go for like a valkyrie dark prince or whatever card that he decided to cycle in the back and he goes in for a royal ghost which is really good for us it's going to die and we can also get some really nice value with the archer queen we're going to make him drop the invisibility first he's going to have to drop that a lot earlier than he would typically want to and now we can go in for our archer queen that he's not able to hit and we're going to be able to protect our Archer Queen with the Giant Skeleton Bomb, so he's not able to drop anything on top of it, so he's guaranteed to take damage. That's a lot of value for us. I mean, he hypothetically could have dropped something like a little bit lower, so then it could soak up the Archer Queen shot, but he decided not to. So we see Poison from our opponent. It's likely going to be a Graveyard deck, if I had to guess. I don't know. Is this going to be Minor Poison as well? There's a chance. When we see Bar Barrel with Archer Queen, most of the time it's Graveyard. Let's see if this guy decides to surprise me. He's got Royal Ghost, though, and Poison. Oh, man, is this like a P.E.K.K.A. deck? It might be a weird P.E.K.K.A. deck that I haven't seen before. There's a chance that it's P.E.K.K.A. There's a chance it's Graveyard. I'm going to roll my dice and say it's P.E.K.K.A., actually. So I'm going to go in for the Archer Queen in the back, and he's got Mega Knight. So it was a third option that I didn't even know existed. I'm going to follow up with the Giant Skeleton to stop that Archer Queen from taking any damage. And then hopefully the Archer Queen isn't stupid. Get out of the way of the Mega Knight jump. Get out of the way of the Mega Knight jump. <laughs> Let's go! She did her magic! I'm gonna go in for a poison here. Poison plus log is able to finish off an archer queen. Or if I get a shot on the archer queen, that's also good enough. Oh, I don't think... Yeah, we do get a shot, so we're fine. It's gonna be an even trade relatively with the archer queens both dying in the middle. But we're up like 700 damage. As you guys can see, playing against Mega Knight decks, which is like half of ladder for a lot of people. You know, you're able to crush it if you use Giant Skeleton effectively. I'm going to go in for a Mortar, so Electric Spirit chains onto that. And then with Electric Spirit out of cycle, I might be able to go in for Bats. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go for Bats on the other side. And then hold my Guards, plus maybe even the Log to finish off the rest of the Ram Rider. Dude, he's got Mother Witch too. Okay, this is uh, going to be a, quite a scary game, I guess. We were able to finish off the Ram Rider very easily with a Log plus Guards, as you guys noticed. However, <laughs> we took a ton of damage because this guy was tucking away a Mother Witch in his deck. He really likes being invisible, not only with his cards... But, you know, with his Archer Queen too. This guy's a madman. He's using the invisibility in more ways than one. Making sure that I didn't see the Mother Witch until it actually hurt me. Okay, so I'm going to go in for a log here on top of the Archer Queen and the Mega Knight. And then hopefully be able to finish it off. We'll have to wait and see if the Mega Knight's going to jump. Oh, it definitely does. Feels pretty bad, man. But the giant skeleton is wandering its way towards the tower. We are forcing out every ounce of elixir this man has left. And maybe he won't have left anything else after the, the Royal Ghost dies too. All right. He uses Electric Spirit. Maybe we can go Giant Skeleton at the river. Go in for Bats. And then go for a Miner. Because he doesn't have Mother Witch to lock onto the Bats. Since the Giant Skeleton is going to take priority. And the Miner is getting tanked for. So we're getting a ton of value here. Oh, that's a lot of Piggies. But it's going right into a Poison. So maybe this will work. Wait, the Piggies can't even find their way through. They're literally clogged up in traffic for the longest time. That's awesome. We've got a lot of damage here. We're finding our way through. Let's go. If we go for another Giant Skeleton, that was probably the best play possible. And then we can go Archer Queen, and then he's not able to kill that with a Bar Barrel. We're winning the Battle of the River since we have a huge tank. Tanking for our Archer Queen, tanking for our units, making sure that we maximize our chances of breaking through. That Giant Skeleton is 100% going to kill the Archer Queen, so I don't have to spend any extra elixir. Oh, my Archer Queen stayed alive! I cannot believe that! What a broken card! <laughs> and this guy did not have a fun time with that at all. He's like, well played. Honestly, I, I don't think he was even salty about that. Wow, what a nice person. 
Genuinely, I got lucky with that thing surviving, but as you guys can see, if your Archer Queen stays alive at one HP, then there's no way your opponent can stay alive. There can only be one left standing. And that Archer Queen was the reason we won. Hey, we got a game against 2.6 Rush. So we wanted to rush right through with the Hog Rider because it's really hard to break through our deck when we have Log, we have Guards to kill out the Hog Rider for counter push and they only spend like one more Elixir than them or drop the Mortar that will also target the tower. But when I see Bomber, I'm thinking it's going to be an Electro Giant deck and something way more sketchy. Wait, this is Royal Hogs. Okay, I wasn't expecting that at all. I'm going to log that back so then the guards don't take any damage from the Skeleton and we can knock back the Piggy so he does less damage on our tower. I'm going to Miner here. The Bomber is definitely dead. I don't know what version of the deck he's got, but he's probably got Royal Delivery. That's what most people have in this version. So, wait. This is nice. The guard's going to stay alive. The Miner's going to be tanking. We're forcing out Skeletons afterward. Oh my gosh, the guard killed each one of those Skeletons. The Miner had a little bit more health, we would have been vibing. The bad thing about Royal Hogs is they're typically paired with Earthquake. If you drop your Mortar here, the Earthquake can extend far enough to hit your Mortar and the Tower at the same time. So, okay, thank goodness he's running Poison. That makes me so much happier. But should it, though? Because Poison plus Log kills my Archer Queen. So the Archer Queen is now in a dangerous, precarious position with him potentially logging this and finishing it off. He's going to Royal Hogs instead, and then he's going to Log. Wow. Wow, that was such a good Log. It hit the guard shields, and it finished off my Archer Queen. I'm satisfied for him. That was a really good play. So we'll see if we can find a way back in this game, but our opponent is a very good player. So got to go in for a Miner here. The Bats are going to be able to get tanked for for a bit. Fortunately for us, I think he has to go for Royal Delivery for three Elixir and not drop it on top of the Miner. Archer Queen was placed in the other side, so then it can stay alive a little bit longer, but I don't know if he's going to be able to have enough Elixir to defend it. Oh, uh, he's going to go for an Ice Spirit, force out a log. Usually, I would just let that Archer Queen do its thing since he already has more damage on the right-hand side, but since he had an Ice Spirit, I couldn't afford that to have happen. So we're going to go in for a Mortar, and then we're going to go in for Guards. He's probably going to poison this. I don't know. No, no, no. He's just going to let it roll because the Mortar was able to get a shot onto the Bomber, so the Bomber's not going to do anything. He wouldn't get any value from not getting damage on my tower. Okay. The guards also have a much longer range than skeletons, so it's nice that they're able to hit the bomber from basically like across the river there. Okay, so we're kind of back in a position where I'm happy, but I'm still not like going to win this game guaranteed. If you log plus poison, it fully counters the archer queen, so that's a, a play that a lot of people don't do. You can't go invisible right now. He knows that it's dead, so he didn't want to overcommit. And because you guys saw that, right? He went in for royal hogs and royal delivery. We can go in for bats. Without the royal delivery and cycle, how is he planning on killing the bats? The bats are getting tanked for... Oh, wow. He just got back to another cycle of royal delivery. <laughs> I guess he wanted to answer that question immediately. He clicked on that buzzer and he's like, Jake, I got your answer. And I guess it wasn't the answer because he missed. So that was kind of good for us. We can poison. I also want to go in for a guards here on defense and then log. Remember guards? So much better than skeleton army and goblins because they stay alive. Like I can actually depend on them. I can drop three elixir, go and look at my offense, look back and be like, yeah, guards, you did your job. Whereas it just doesn't work the same when you've got goblins and they pre-log you, you know? The guards were able to still finish the job on the piggies. So I might want to go in for an aggressive play here when I get the opportunity. As you guys know, we want to keep our guards alive. So then he has to log and delivery. He's definitely going to delivery on that. But also you guys can notice that he only has skeletons to catch my miners. So we're going to pre-poison them. And that'll be a great trade for us overall. If he goes piggies, we can go in for a log here. Hopefully we can hit the ice spirit. Oh, that ice spirit was bad for me. That ice spirit was super sketchy. He's going to get a ton of damage. He's kind of putting himself back in the game. Man, this guy is so good. Oh, geez. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That's so much damage. That is emotional damage to me right now, bro. All right. This poison is quite bad as well, but the ice spirit is out of cycle. So maybe we can go in for a mortar and stop him from going for royal hogs and then go in for a log and then go in for bats afterward. We need to be able to clean this up. Unfortunately, the ice spirit isn't going to be able to kill it. And if he goes in for poison, it will be too late to escape the fate. So this guy was insanely good at the game, but I think we will put him to shame with this poison and log. And we should put him out of his misery right now with that last minor hit. We are digging our way to success. And even though this guy was insanely talented, I think our deck completely carried us. The strength of the guards on defense and then the direct damage of minor plus poison just simply outclasses all the win conditions that have to struggle to find their way through buildings and units onto the tower. Miner has the power to pop directly on tower and instantly get value. All right, so we've got a game against an aggressive Viking clan member. So we're gonna see what's up. Let's see if they throw down and decide to spam stuff immediately at the start. Decides not to, goes in for a goblin cage instead. So that is free real estate for my miner on the tower. So that's really good. Not only are we going to be able to get a lot of damage because the baby dragon can't body block the miner, but it's also a negative trade for our opponent going right into a giant skeleton. 
He's going to sacrifice the baby dragon that barely does anything besides tickle my giant skeleton. And then the goblin cage is going to go on the other side. So I don't even know if it pulls the giant skeleton. No, it doesn't. Let's go. <laughs> this is absolutely epic. Giant skeleton's going to find value on top of the boulder too. And I think this might be rail giant if I had to guess. So I'm going to go for a mortar aggressively right now. You guys might be like, why would you do that if you think you're playing against royal giant? Well, I want to keep his elixir low. Oh, it's electro giant with bowler. Wait, what the heck? I really wasn't ready for this. So I want to go bats here and I want to go minor. I want to force him to go in for tornado so then we can maybe go in for an archer queen and not have this die. We need this archer queen to lock onto the phoenix first, please. Let's go. So that's beautiful. If the archer queen is going to be far enough away from the electro giant to not get shocked, we might be able to win this game. Wait, I need a log. I need a log. I need to log that stupid bird. <laughs> oh my gosh. If that guy's resurrected, my towers would crumble, so I can't have that happen. All right, we can get a second ability here. That's how a broken Archer Queen is. Like, if you cycle an ability on your side of the map, a lot of times you can get back to another one for your, your opponent's side of the map. I'm going to go in for guards here as well, so then we can apply more aggression because the Barbaro is out of cycle. Look at the Archer Queen! It's literally a win condition! You guys might think Miner plus Mortar is the real win condition, but the Archer Queen is hiding. She's invisible. The real win condition. Oh my gosh. Alright, so I'm going to go for another Giant Skeleton. High chance that our opponent decides to go in for an Electro Giant soon. Typically want to go in for a Miner here because the Giant Skeleton is not going to get knocked back. So we'll always permanently tank for the Miner to give us more damage. I can't even understand why he Phoenixed there. I genuinely have no words for why he did that, but it didn't work for him, okay? <laughs> Probably wasn't the strategy. He saw the miner digging and he's like, the miner went on the left hand side last time, so it's probably going to go on the same side again. And it, it just didn't, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to go in for guards here because we want to be able to go and surround the boulder if possible. And then I want to go for giant skeleton because he'll likely tornado, and I don't want him to be able to kill my archer queen. The giant skeleton's a little bit beefier, and it's immune to that electricity. Pikachu used Thunderbolt, and it wasn't very effective. All right, we're going to go in for the Archer Queen here and then immediately go in for a Miner. He's probably going to Lightning here. I would expect him to Lightning. If he decides not to, that'd be interesting. The Archer Queen is melting faces here, though. Oh, my gosh. Wait, if that Giant Skeleton locks him to the tower, I win the game. Super Omega close, but didn't happen. All right, we're going to go in for... Wait, the Archer Queen locked on the tower. That's ridiculous. I could have poisoned and killed that. It's fine, though. I'm going to go in for a Mortar and pull the Electro Giant as far as possible. As you guys are noticing, he's not able to hit everything with the Lightning. We're going to go in for a Giant Skeleton really high up and then say hello to our value. Hello, my little friend. <laughs> it's so funny to see Electro Giant stumble and never get value onto your Mortars because the Mortar doesn't, like, give him anything to do, right? If the Mortar isn't going to ever give him value, what is he going to do if he's using his Electro Giant and measly shocking... The, the, the Electro Giant regular attacks and not being able to do any reflection damage to the Mortar. He can't finish it off. Also, he's trying to go in for an Electro Giant here. We can go in for a Mortar. Now it's going to retarget on the tower, so he has to drop something to body block that. But then he also has to body block on top of the Miner, and it's just all too much. The offense that you get with this deck with the constant Mortars and Miners bombarding your opponent's towers leaves them absolutely no room to apply aggression. This guy somehow had to defend his 200 HP tower while doing 2,000 damage at the same time. Meanwhile, my Poison, Miner, or Mortar would all finish off the tower. If you guys hate playing against Electro Giant, this deck exterminates them. We've quickly climbed up to 1,800 in the world without losing a single game. Hey, we got a game against Reinhard. And looking at this guy's banner, he finished 400 in the world, so also going to be a very talented player. Wow, we're getting a lot of good players today. All right, he's going to go for a minor. If I lose this game, I'm going to lose a lot of trophies. He's significantly under us, so I don't want to lose this game. We're going to go in for the Miner because we've got the bats counter pushing. Hopefully, we're able to kill the Magic Archer with this log. I don't know this interaction. Does a log plus Mortar Shot? Yeah, it does. Log Mortar Shot finishes off a of Magic Archer, and it allowed my Mortar to retarget onto the tower. He's giving me a well-played. Bro, I didn't know that interaction. I was experimenting for everyone to watch, and <laughs> we learned something awesome. But, you know, that will be our little secret between you and me watching, guys. No one knew except us. No one, no one else. You can't let this guy know how uh, stupid we were there, just trying to see if it would actually happen. And it paid off huge, so we can go for bats, or maybe we can go in for, like, an Archer Queen on top of that. Yo, the Archer Queen is able to shoot on the Bomb Tower, so the Giant Skeleton takes the targeting. This will be well worth it. I wonder if guards are able to completely clean up those... Yeah, they do. Wow, guards' damage per second is awesome. He doesn't even want to go for a log because he can't kill the guards. He can't go for Tornado on the Miner because he has to deal with the Archer Queen. And he's down so much Elixir. Wait, what? We blasted back the Valkyrie behind the tower using the giant skeleton bomb. And you know the saddest thing? The guards on the left-hand side did more damage than all the Arch Queen and Miner's task force put together were able to accomplish. That's ridiculous. That's straight up stupid that that worked so well for us. 
All right, I'm gonna go for an aggressive mortar because I think that this is the right play. If he goes bomb tower, it will lock onto a giant skeleton. Let's go! I'm so proud to make that prediction. It feels fantastic when it works off. I'm gonna log here so then the mortar can target onto the, the magic archer. So if it gets one shot, then maybe it's just gonna die. Yeah, I mean, it didn't really matter because, oh, maybe it did. Is that nah, not gonna get a hit? I was hopeful. I was optimistic. Just one more millimeter, guys. So close, yet so far away. I would have won the game instantly if that exploded. Okay, I probably need to poison, and I probably can get away with poison and guards and finish it all off. Let's go! <laughs> yes, I spent an insane amount of elixir, but he also dropped 10 elixir at the river as well. So that's good. I'll take it, you know, if we both drop our entire elixir banks and you don't get damage, and it looked really sketchy because I didn't have mortar and I didn't have log in my cycle. I'll take that, man. I consider that a W for me. All right, I can go in for an archer queen expecting you to go in for... Uh, oh, wait. I guess he predicted me predict the magic archer and he went for a bomb tower wait what this guy's predictions are at a different level or something this guy's wild all right i'm gonna go for minor because as you guys can see the archer queen just refuses to die i can go for bats here and then i can log on the goblins if i want to but i think the goblins aren't gonna give him anything nah the goblins literally don't do much at all i'd rather save my log in case he decides to go wall breakers the goblin single file line just not gonna give him damage all right so we take that, unless they're overleveled. I'm going to go in for guards, and even if you pre-log, I'm pretty sure that you don't get anything. That's the best thing about the guards. You can just drop them and not care at all. All right, we're going to go in for a miner. Doesn't have tornado for a while, right? Or does he get back to it? We're going to go goblins. We're going to poison them. And then that's going to give us more damage than a log, and we can keep the log and cycle for his aggressive wall breaker shenanigans. That should be coming any second. He's going to wait for that giant skeleton to explode. He doesn't want to go in. We can go for bats and log, and then... Ooh, okay, we're dropping everything. We're dropping everything. Guards, save me. What the heck? If you guys don't run guards after seeing that interaction, I don't know what else to explain. Like, that was ridiculous. He dropped every ounce of elixir, every prediction possible, and it still wasn't enough. That's just straight up unfair, and I'm loving it. Okay, we can go in for mortar here aggressively. We're going to expect him to go for magic archer, so we want to go for guards. Oh, he didn't. I thought he was going to go Magic Archer and try to align with the Mortar so then he could get damage. The Valkyrie gets too close, he loses. So that's another amazing thing. The Valkyrie should get too close. And then we can go for a Poison on the Magic Archer. Yo, the Magic Archer is targeting the Miner instead of the Mortar. That's awesome. I think the Valkyrie gets too close again. And that should target Tower. If he goes in for a Miner, oh my gosh, wait. I can just go in for a Mortar here. <laughs> that's infinitely better. I'm going to eat the damage just to finish off the game a little bit faster. Sometimes, you know, you've guaranteed the W and it's just not worth playing a little bit longer. Just, you know, finish your opponent off a little bit faster. I think I want to go guards here because if I log, then I won't have that in cycle. I'm going to go in for a mortar since we're able to pull all of his wall breakers without any issues at all. We can go in for a minor on defense if we want, or we can log, minor here, and then probably get guards down because those wall breakers are looking scary. Dude, it's so easy to defend that. Even though this guy was so good at the game, it didn't even matter. Very fun stuff. As you guys can see, if you're playing against other cycle decks, you're going to win every time. Even if they have alternative win conditions like Magic Archer, it's unlikely that it will ever give value, and you can use your Guards and Archer Queen on offense to rack up even more damage than their win conditions. It feels a bit absurd to see Guards and Archer Queen doing more damage on offense than the win conditions of Wall Breakers and Magic Archer. Yeah, so last season, that guy finished 400 in the world, so definitely one of the best players in the game. All right, we got a game against Mr. Steve. What's up, dude? Insanity Clash. Well, I'm ready to bash your towers and really bring the pain. I want to go for Mortar aggressively because I have Giant Skeleton. I feel like I can defend against Electro Giants if I do that. Most of the time, I don't like cycling my Mortar at the start, but I will when I have Giant Skeleton in my hand. Okay, this is really scary because I'm probably going to be playing against someone that's got either like a very low skill deck with Graveyard and Giant or maybe just a very spammy Sparky deck. Okay, that Archer Queen needs to kill the Skeleton, and unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. So I'm going to go Guards here so we stop the Giant from getting another shot, and then I can go for a Miner here as well. This is good stuff. We've got a Miner, we've got Guards, and Archer Queen counter pushing. If he just goes Phoenix, he's not going to be able to stop the Guards. People underestimate how good Guards are. Look at that. You can't guard the Guards, apparently, and you lost your entire freaking tower. That's straight up disgusting how good this deck is on the counter push. Most Miner Poison decks or Miner Rocket decks don't have that offensive capability. But right now, we'll just defend for the rest of the game with our poisons on the graveyard, giant skeleton on his big pushes, and mortars to go and pull his giants to the middle of nowhere. He can't come back. That was an incredibly easy win. Even though this guy had Phoenix, he wasn't able to fly his way back into the game. Destroying giant graveyard decks that easily feels so freaking good. It's awesome to play a deck that keeps you super safe while having the offensive capability of taking towers early. When you collect an early crown, your opponent will frown because there's absolutely no way for them to come back.
Like, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest of your day.